Hello ladies and gentlemen, I'm here to review uh, TSM vs Immortals. I've chosen some key moments in the game that uh, really identify uh, the issues that were exhibited in this game. It's a very good game to, to learn from because um, here we can see two very different compositions at work and uh, usually being ahead is not going to allow you to roll through the game. It's going to allow you to set yourself up to play the game the way you need to play it. Because even though uh, TSM was ahead in, in this game, it won't allow them to be uh, this kind of composition that can just roll over the enemy team. Uh, Immortals, they drafted a very, very poke-heavy composition, and uh, they really, really wanted to play the 4-1. They wanted to play on the Brom Slows, on the Q of Ezreal and Zoe. It's a very uh, classic uh, uh, 2019 uh, composition where people were just playing as real Zoe and poking, poking, poking. It was very frustrating to deal with. Some might say it's outdated. I even on uh, Twitter, uh, you know, uh, flamed this draft a little bit, you know, because it was, uh, you know, it is pretty old school. Uh, but um, nevertheless, uh, I wanted to begin with, you know, talking about all the points and then we will go. Uh, into them you know first one is draft uh, second one is early game priorities meaning like where did they invest their energy and time and where was the uh, where was the advantage built uh, weak trades meaning let's say they traded turret for an objective uh, maybe these trades were uh, done poorly in order to uh, set them up for a uh, good uh, game right uh, three, not identifying strengths while Immortals did. So Immortals was very, very good and keen on identifying their strength. They were playing 4-1 most of the game and uh, they punished TSM quite hard for uh, not understanding how uh, they're supposed to pl play the game. The number four, we call that a point Soas 200 IQ. Uh, I'm assuming Soas the one is making the calls with, uh, for example, Ezreal taking the fourth Drake that they needed to get the, uh, the, the, the Air Drake Soul and also the Nasher that they secured. These were uh, uh, honestly monkey wrenches in uh, the TSM uh, cogwheels and uh, it really, really set them behind and gave them, you know, honestly uh, ruined uh, a lot of TSM's tempo. Uh, uh, number five is usage of Tamkench ult and TPs. Uh, honestly, uh, a big issue for TSM was not using their global power, but we're going to go into detail in regards to uh, what you can and cannot do. And then number six is itemization. Uh, the reason I put number six is because it's not that big of a deal. And then number seven, I felt like desperation was a very big problem as well. Because eventually, as TSM realized that they're in this position where they are just getting poked down and Senna is, uh, uh, you know, breaking healing records, uh, they were just trying to just force Nash in front of the enemy. And uh, that's not something that you can do against the whole composition. So let's start at draft. Uh, the draft, you know, the issue with the draft for me is while Rumble is a very strong pick, let me just uh, start Epic Pen. So we need Epic Pen. Rumble is a very strong pick. Very, very strong pick. Uh, in this composition, it is not. So when you have Senna and Tom Kench, this already has very low synergy with Rumble. Also, Lee Sin and LeBlanc, they also have very low synergy with, with Rumble. So already in this conversation, you know that uh, we're going to want to have Senna Tamkinch in the mid lane. They're going to want to uh, defend the turret and they can do so very easily with the long range that Senna has. And then in case any bubbles land from Zoe or Elise Cocoons or even Brom Qs, then Tamkinch can eat and save. So they can definitely uh, defend the mid tower for a very long time in this game. And also Senna Tamkinch will have a great matchup into Ezreal Brom and in general Senna Tam is just OP. Rumble, you pick it for the flex. And you pick it uh, in order to kind of draft compositions around it, like Nautilus, Jarvan. You want to have compositions that are very big on team fighting, and you want to be very explosive in those. Uh, Lee Sin, Leblanc uh, fit in the bell together with Tom Kench and Senna. Basically, Senna Tom defend the mid tower, while Lee Sin and Leblanc wreak havoc on uh, the side lane. They're going to be very difficult to catch, and they're going to be very, very strong in the 2v2. They can easily uh, one-shot and gain an advantage. So what is Rumble's purpose here? The second issue with Rumble is, especially against a champion like Aatrox, Aatrox is going to be allowed here to itemize a lot of magic resistance. So that's going to delay the power that LeBlanc has in later parts of the game. Meaning, 
when you are uh, playing a composition like this, you want to rely on split push, you want to uh, make sure that you're stronger in the split, you want to make sure that the level line is as strong as possible. Uh, you do that by using the 2v2 in order to impact the Zoe, and then later you hope that Leblanc is stronger than Aatrox. But just because Aatrox is laying against Rumble, he can easily itemize Merc Threads, more of Malmortius, so this is going to delay the pressure that Leblanc can create on side. But more on itemization later on in the game. Immortals, uh, the reason I was uh, filling in the draft a little bit on Twitter was because uh, a lot of these matchups are quite outdated. Uh, I think the 2v2 in mid lane is better for uh, Lee Sin and Leblanc, and also Senna Tam is just way higher quality than Braum and Ezreal. Of course, Braum and Ezreal have their strengths, but the issue here is when Senna Tam are winning lane and they can harass and they can poke, uh, they, them being ahead is a very, very big deal. Uh, Senna's gonna get a lot of souls, and uh, uh, plain and simple, uh, through that, you can almost snowball the game alone. Uh, TSM were definitely in a position to win this game because of how strong their composition was early, but they couldn't uh, really put the finger on how to uh, snowball the game. So I want to move on to the first point, uh, because TSM did indeed play a good early game. I'm just going to uh, move uh, my camera in order to make sure that I don't block Dardock. We can just move over here. That's a good slot, I think. Uh, we're going to continue. I've chosen, you know, in this review, there is going to be moments where, of course, uh, there are moments maybe you think are important, maybe I'm going to miss those. Maybe you can write this in the comments down below uh, if you have any considerations. I'm going to try to make this as quick as possible. That's going to be difficult with a one-hour game, but let's start from here. So this one uh, was a pretty big because uh, Smithy actually gets spotted. Uh, the big question mark here is, how did Soaz manage his wave? So always when you have Lees in your uh, in your team, you want to sacrifice HP uh, on the early lane in order to make sure that you get push. Uh, Rumble, uh, in, in this wave position, uh, how we achieved this point, I couldn't check because uh, I don't have Pro View yet and they didn't really show it. But usually what you want to do with Aatrox is you want to m basically you want to match the push and then when Rumble uh, starts to slow push, you want to sacrifice HP here uh, in order to maintain a freeze. But right now, this wave is slow pushing towards Rumble. It's slow pushing towards Rumble, I assume, because uh, Rumble managed to bounce the wave and he also managed to ward during this timer. Uh, actually, Rumble warded quite early. This is way earlier than uh, I thought because I'm looking at the HP of the ward now. But I think... Most of the time, Aatrox can definitely control the wave in a way where he loses HP, but he can uh, control uh, Rumble's position and make it worse and then set up for the Elise gank, because that's always a threat. So already now, the fact that Elise is spotted and the wave is slow pushing towards Rumble means that Rumble is relatively safe here. Next thing is, since Xmithy is spotted, Dardock's decision becomes a lot easier. Here, uh, Rumble and Elisen pushed Elise out, so as with a good trade on top side, but once again, as I mentioned before, Aatrox is indeed slow pushing. So Leeson here is uh, doing a ring around the rosy, also uh, catching the raptors because he could see uh, the, uh, the CS of Elise knowing that he did bot side camps into top side into level 3 top, uh, the classic with, with Gromp, uh, blue and also red buff. So here uh, Leeson sneaks in for a, for a punish. But here, Soaz is in trouble because Elise is pathing into bot because she did her golems, doesn't have raptors, uh, lost uh, lost a crab on top side because of the wave position and also the overall uh, uh, situation that's going on here. And then Soaz now needs to push in this wave into the turret, but Broken Blade is contesting hard. He's contesting very hard. He's willing to sacrifice HP because he sees the position of Lee Sin. He's coming around the corner here, right? He's coming around the corner, and now uh, this is a disaster because Aatrox and Elise level 3 level, uh, is a very important spike to use. If you don't use it, then uh, your champions are going to lose a lot of power. Uh, we continue. So here, Darlock manages to, to burn a flash. So as walks up, here is a flash. So as flashes, and then still his wave is in a terrible position, and Broken Blade is going to get quite a decent punish here. And as you can see, Xmithy uh, went into uh, bottom side, all the way into bottom side, and then he went all the way into top side because uh, Immortals realized that uh, the wave position is just terrible. 
and uh, then eventually Smithy gives up and he's been uh, legitimately just running back and forth here for quite some time. So this is a, a very, very big time sink and the CS numbers have not improved for Elise after he took uh, the golems and it's five minutes now. The Gromp has respawned and he's going for his bottom side camps and uh, Leeson is very happy in his position basing on the double longsword and also still uh, Aatrox is pressured here because Aatrox does not know uh, Elise's position and Elise is not strong enough to face check now because of the double longsword and Elise is very behind on tempo. So Dowduck did uh, very very well in this early game and this is uh, uh, you know uh, one point as to what TSM did uh, very well this game. Uh, next thing that comes up is um, you know if we evaluate the game state the, the thing that we hope for is that TSM uh, are playing on the 2v2 mid lane but just because of this itemization here uh, the mercury it becomes more difficult to do so also uh, Lee Sin pre-6 Lee Sin gets to level 6 so late and before uh, Lee Sin is level 6 they're not going to be able to one shot Zoe uh, so that's very big Lee Sin is going to get level 6 at 10 minutes which is super super late uh, way later than it used to be uh, next point now that I wanted to point out was uh, 12 minutes 12 minutes was a play where TSM invaded enemy blue buff uh, this uh, went uh, quite wrong considering TSM is in a state of power Tom Kench and Senna have prio as we mentioned before when we reviewed the draft they're walking into this space and uh, a lot of things went wrong here Senna and Tama coming in the level 6 you can see Ezreal and Brom they're level 5 so here TSM is much stronger good move here because Aika is very reliant on this blue buff because he went for Mercury right uh, on Leblanc side he has Dark Seal he has Fairy Charm and uh, one more Corruption Potion if they secure this blue buff it means they're going to secure a lot of pressure uh, instead what happens is uh, a big loss of tempo and whenever you're the team that is ahead and you're losing time it's always going to be a, a bad thing so the wave on bottom is good for TSM because it's slow pushing towards them because the wave bounced and then here we have the reset uh, the reset and uh, Altec is getting a lot of value here. He managed to le reach level 6 and he shaved Biofrost. And I don't know if it's correct here for TSM to actually give up on this because the wave bottom is good and uh, they should have definitely continued. Xmithy flashes, Tartog gets hit by a uh, Q of Zoe and then it resets again. And I think here if we're in a position where, uh, uh, where TSM committed completely, this could have been potentially better and... Uh, I think uh, usually what you want to do is you want to make sure that the enemy is split up. Basically, you want to control this space or this space completely. You are you, Your advantage is that you are grouped here, right? Leeson crossed the wall, Leblanc crossed the wall. So they are four here and then there's two, there's two. So basically, you want to make sure that you suffocate the enemy out. But it becomes a bit more difficult because Zoe is very mobile in terms of doing damage over walls and so is Ezreal. So... Uh, Immortal are doing uh, doing quite good here in terms of, of poking and making this as difficult as possible. But I think if TSM really, really forced on one side, this could have uh, ended bad for Immortals. But just because it was so drawn out and it was so long, uh, a lot of Ezreal Qs landed, uh, the, the Zoe Qs landed, and then we had the reset because Dadok uh, needed to smite the blue buff. So this was a very big deal too, because uh, if they managed to secure this blue buff, Aika will get punished for his itemization and it will be very impactful. Next thing that happened was um, a big one because I mentioned trade priorities and giving uh, the enemy breathing room. TSM are still in a very good position here on the map just because of how strong Tam and Senna is. They have uh, prio and they continu can continue to have prio. They have TP advantage. Everything is going fine and dandy here for TSM. Hakuo is uh, walking up. And, uh, and so forth. Here we will have a swap. We can see that Senna and Tam is walking towards Rift Herald, but judging the tempo here, you can see the TSM is super far ahead on tempo. Rumble had prior on top, Bjergsen had prior on mid, uh, Zoe base second. Everything is fantastic here. This Herald is taken. So now the biggest question mark is um, TSM have no reason to continue into top. They can just keep matching and uh, they can be happy because matching here is good. If they decide as a team now to walk into mid lane and fight on this wave that is coming next, they're going to be stronger. Because if you evaluate items, there's a man immune, there's a sheen tier, and um, uh, this is a uh, prime time position. Uh, Rumble needs to base, that's fine, but they can walk four into mid here 
and then they can contest Drake and not give it up for free. They have good enough vision on both sides, two pink ones, as I'm highlighting it on the minimap, they shouldn't be giving anything up. Because the move that they are doing now in terms of going all in and using the Rift, sure, it could, can be considered fine, but putting that gold and effort into Senna is not going to be the game breaker here. As we mentioned before, Leblanc is, is the one that needs to uh, get ahead, needs to be fed, needs to be strong enough to beat Aatrox on side because Rumble is not going to do that. And uh, Leblanc being fed and, uh, you know, eventually buying a Void Staff, a Death Cap, and then being able to one-shot the Aatrox is uh, definitely the goal here. So, them funneling the gold into Senna and then uh, giving the enemy Infernal Drake, while in a lot of cases I would argue that taking top tower and f hitting a lot of platings is, is worth it for a Drake, this is a rare case where it, it, TSM is strong enough to, to secure both. They are definitely strong enough to secure both, but having prior on that wave that I pointed out in the previous example is key. So here, this would be the moment, this is the wave to contest and then to move, because as you can see, there is full vision, they still have information on Drake, and uh, they can go for it. Immortals take the decision of taking the Drake, and uh, they definitely get rewarded for it uh, later on in the game. So we continue. We continue, we continue, Immortals uh, take this Drake, TSM go commit into top side, Dardok uh, goes uh, for the Rift Herald. Here uh, they should cut off uh, Aatrox exits earlier because here Swaz was quite greedy and he got away with murder I feel. And then the Herald is being used on top and Ezreal and Braum is already rotating into top side. But this is something that could happen always because of how strong Senna and Tam is. That's why I'm against this, you know, that's why I'm against it. I think TSM could have gotten everything. And that's something that you kind of have to do when your composition is so much stronger in the early game. Especially after the point where Lee Sin reached level 6 and is just going to be way more useful than, uh, of course, uh, Elise. Okay. So the next point is we're going to fast forward a little bit. 21 minutes. 21 minutes, which is 17 minutes into the game. Here... Uh, the thing that I wanted to point out is uh, itemization, itemization choice. So we have uh, the Quicksilver Sash for Tamkench, which is arguable, right? It's for Zoe Sleep and for uh, Cocoon, but uh, most of the time, uh, while it's okay, it's not terrible, uh, most of the time what we see is, um, you know, players catching these and then uh, Tamkench eating the person that catches them for him. I think it doesn't run too much risk of, of using QSS and uh, in this game it wasn't that big of a difference maker. So this purchase can definitely be questioned. Yumu's Ghost Blade is fine because of the move speed. Uh, move speed is always strong against Zoe and Ezreal of course and any type of poke compositions. Dusk Blade is usually the item of choice but but poking is not going to be the, the big deal here for Senna. She's going to be uh, just uh, playing on movement and walking. The reason I made itemization a big point is because Banshee's Veil is the choice for uh, for Bjergsen. So while it makes it makes sense against Zoe in particular, and if you want to deal with poke compositions, and if you want to look to fight into mortals, then it's okay, but it's going to make you significantly weaker in the matchup against Aatrox. If you buy Banshees into Aatrox, of course you don't get that many useful stats, the shield maybe can help you get away from 1Q or something like this, but uh, especially when Aatrox is in a position where he's going to be able to buy a lot of MR, you need to be very, very careful. Uh, you can consider getting Morello right because you need, to, uh, you need to deny his healing, you need to get Void, you need to get Death Cap. These are very big and important items that you need, need in order to beat Aatrox inside. Not just beat, but completely destroy. You want to be at the point where you can one-shot him with a full comp around level 16, and the Banshee's purchase is going to delay that. So there is another approach to this game, right, that, um, that TSM can employ. While split push is one way, the other way would be to find flanks with Lee Sin and Leblanc. While Bjergsen, for a, for a, for a big part of the game, tried to flank, Dardok was always trying from, from, from the mid lane to fish for Qs. But these are, this is things that I'm going to show you as the game goes on. It is just about evaluating the position. If you evaluate Immortal's position, all they want to do is to make sure that Ezra gets two items, he's going to spike, 
finished items on Aatrox, allow them to buy as much MR as possible and just play 4-1-4-1-4-1. They dream of positions where TSM groups, where TSM groups and they are all showing that is the ideal situation for Immortals and this is something that Immortals were always looking for and they always created so it definitely uh, worked against TSM. They just didn't know how to execute their composition. TSM needed to flank or they needed to split. So let's continue. So here, 2230, we have another trade that is can be considered good, can be considered good, but at the same time can be uh, considered uh, uh, quite bad. So here we had um, Leblanc in topside. So if you're committing into going here, Leblanc has no TP. If you're committing into going into here, everyone needs to follow. Meaning this space should be completely closed off and Ezreal should not be allowed to farm. There's two ways to approach this. Either you contest, which uh, uh, you could write, Mountain Drake, it's it's okay, it's not uh, the end of the day, it's not going to be a game winner, or you look to pressure dive here. These pink cords and this space here that um, that um, that Immortals is still controlling through these pinks is, is a problem. So here you want TSM to walk up a bit further, and then I want them to enter this space the moment Immortals enters this space. Because now for Immortals, uh, four Dragon Souls becomes becomes very real, right? The dream of four Dragon Souls become, I mean, uh, a Dragon Soul and four Dragons uh, becomes real. So here, I like TSM's decision because I think if they dove Altec here and denied him this wave and they got this tower and they got the Herald, I would be completely fine with it because uh, Rumble would ult the wave, right? Something that I didn't mention earlier when when uh, TSM did the swap, uh, when they did the swap, and uh, basically they, they went for uh, they went for the Herald and they gave up the Drake and they went for Top Tower. They went for that swap because they have Rumble Ult and they wanted to just deny the tempo, just Rumble Ult the wave. This is a very similar idea. Rumble Ult the wave, make sure you don't get Dove on bottom, and then uh, you commit on top side. But I think here, definitely with Tamkinch Ult or Leeson could be hiding in Fog here. Uh, this is uh, the way to do it. A major issue for TSM was how much Dardoch was showing. He was showing constantly, constantly, constantly sitting on mid, sharing XP with 3. And this is very bad. Imagine if Lee Sin is in fog. Let's say Lee is here. All of a sudden, Leblanc and Lee Sin can pressure a lot and Tom Kench and Senna can just hover here with Tom Kench ult. Even though Tom Kench ult range is not that big, it's around this size. Uh, they can still hover into this side and play with their team. Leblanc and Leeson is enough. A very big issue was how much Dardo was showing. So we continue. We roll the clip. As you can see, Altic is farming away with Q range. He's uh, feeling good. He's feeling safe. Dardo is doing Raptors. Okay. And uh, Leblanc is starting, of course, uh, the Herald. Uh, Immortals. Uh, Broken Play didn't ult the bottom wave. In fact, uh, we didn't see him or he didn't show, so I can't, uh, I guess I was wrong there. Nevertheless, DSM was securing this and uh, uh, Immortals is uh, very, very happy with the fact that uh, they get to clear uh, the, the wave here on the mid lane. So 27 is uh, around the time where the next Drake spawns and uh, the same issue remains. TSM are grouping as four. They're trying to find ways to pressure. Uh, Null Magic Mantle bought now, and uh, Banshee is finished now on Leblanc, so the itemization is not, uh, there is no uh, significant gap here. So definitely uh, Aatros can hold. Uh, split push uh, power is going to have to wait, and uh, Tom Kench is a level, ele uh, level 10. So level 11 is a very key ultimate uh, point for Tom Kench because his range just increases by so much, so, so much. It's uh, borderline uh, global when you reach level 16 and uh, level 11 is already a big deal. It is uh, almost like the, the OP Tom Kench. Here, this is the dream position for Immortals. Four people showing, uh, Leblanc was in base, she's walking, uh, she has TP. Uh, ideally, what you want to do with Dardoch is you want to hide in fog always. Especially when the mid tower is gone, you can find angles you can find angles always with Bjergsen because usually teams don't have enough wards to cover. People use blue trinkets. 
in order to cover your back and uh, if uh, immortals would be pressured from uh, the side then all of a sudden contesting mid lane it, it changes drastically because even though immortals have a poke composition and they're very happy to be four against four in such a position uh, they struggle when people come from behind especially Ezreal, Zoe and also Brom because as Brom says stand behind Brom if there is a threat behind Brom as well as the front of Brom then you know you're, you're doing something right so with these big item power spikes you know it, there is definitely ways where you can find flanks and then you can look to barbecue the moment Ezreal is and you can definitely find ways to force fights but Dardok is constantly showing these guys are constantly showing Kobe's healing is a very big deal here because he's healing away healing away and uh, my point about this team being a poke comp is that it's very difficult for them to also hard engage on Tam and Senna. It's not that they can be like, oh, oh, let's go, let's go, let's engage. It's like Ezreal E into W of Braum into Ult is not too exciting, it's not too fancy. Uh, I think uh, TSM's bot lane can always get away and especially if they force and these guys are in fog of war, it is going to be quite dangerous. It's just that the worst thing you can do against a poke composition is constantly show constantly show right that is the issue so we continue here because i felt like immortals here maybe had an opportunity to to force a bit harder these guys are passing by i think they could have poked uh, a little bit more when they passed that's by for sleeping uh, qss wasn't used but he has a lot of mr so he doesn't take that much damage we continue poke fest uh, continues and senna is healing away Leblanc is uh, having a good mindset here, so Bjorkson is going around this angle and finding flank. Imagine if, if Leeson was also in this area. Imagine if Leeson was in this area and Rumble was sitting in this bush. It would be uh, far superior. Because all of a sudden, this lack of vision for, for Immortals would actually mean something. But TSM was showing with four people in mid. So Immortals' decision becomes very, very easy. Imagine Lee is standing here right now. Imagine Leblanc is here right now. All of a sudden they are flanking and committing. Rumblewood comes down after the gap closes are being used. Banshee can be used to block, for example, the, the Zoe or something like this. And all of a sudden you can start a fight if that is your goal, right? If that is your goal, that would be the way to do it. And then uh, on top of that, uh, when uh, Leblanc and Lee commit and they try to one-shot a target, uh, uh, Senna's ultimate is very powerful to, to follow up and Rumble ult is very powerful to follow up, right? So they can definitely one-shot some kids if they wanted to. Immortals here uh, are doing the right decision because Immortal uh, TSM makes it very easy for them. So we cannot uh, uh, we cannot say anything negative about what Immortal is doing here. They're playing 4-1, they're man so as is managing the sideways very well and Immortals is just constantly grouping because that's what their composition is about, right? So we continue. We continue. Forgive me for being repetitive, but it's all about just making clear what the issue is, you know, and uh, finding uh, the exhibitions to really, really showcase uh, the problems. TSM are uh, in a fine position to do this Drake, but of course, Immortals have better access to mid lane. So here, with this in mind, Immortals can easily rotate onto the mid tower, but TSM decide to chase. The rumble loot was quite decent and they didn't take that much poke damage and Senna can heal up a lot of the damage that is being done uh, Biofrost and uh, Kobe. Looking around the corner to look to chase, Leblanc TP is very intelligent here. I like the move here from TSM looking to force. Because here, once again, you know, why is this team fight so attractive? Because they're coming from multiple angles. They're coming from multiple angles. Ezreal and uh, Zoe and Brom have a significant weakness when people are coming from different angles. Poke compositions dream of situations where the target is right in front of you. And this is why this fight was, uh, for, for the most part, very successful. So here, one hit, Bjorkson keeping a position, does the ult. This is a fantastic showcase of what TSM's composition had as potential. Hako gets kind of screwed over here. Broken Blade is coming around the corner. Uh, they are fighting, uh, Immortals are fighting because uh, they need to fight back a little bit in order to push back TSM was the only option. It is almost, a, it's honestly a miracle that more of them didn't die. 
and uh, a lot of flashes are being burned. Bron flash, Ezreal flash, Zoe flash, Lee's flash, a lot of key flashes. Let's take a look at what Darduk did. Darduk uh, queued in and died. I don't think it was necessary. No, actually, he's just facing in the bush, and so as gets him. Yeah, it's not necessary. So they get two. And uh, just because Darduk died, there's no pressure of Nashor. If Darduk didn't uh, suicide here, then uh, it would have been uh, Nashor. This could have potentially won up the game. Here, TSM actually found the recipe as to how they should fight. And just because of LeBlanc's itemization with Banshee, honestly, fighting is probably easier than split pushing because of how uh, strong Aatrox is now by itemizing so much MR. So I really like this fight. Really, really like this fight. So next move that happened is at 31, and this is where TSM make a full rotation onto bottom to deal with Aatrox. Bjergsen, of course, doesn't have TP because he TP'd from before. So here we have TSM playing 1-3-1 with Rumble, Porom. Rumble doesn't have TP either, but uh, I think TSM can be comfortable uh, in the idea of, uh, you know, Immortals uh, don't, don't have the fastest Nash in the world. But... Obviously, if you commit with uh, Tom Kench uh, to gank Soaz here, it is going to end quite sour because what Immortal, what what TSM should be doing is they should be two on mid, two on top, look to push all the way. There's no tower here, so uh, they can definitely threaten uh, a fight on top side, and then Immortals want to look to un outnumber with the TP uh, of Soaz. So uh, basically, a four man will push here, they will walk into here, they will look to pressure here. And then two men on top side of TSM will look to pressure top side, and then there will be like a status quo around Nash, where Motos have a choice if they want to pull the trigger with the TP, uh, or if uh, they are going to uh, look to let Aatrox split. Uh, most, li most likely, Immortals is going to just look to go into here. Another way to deal with uh, the fact that um, TSM don't have TP on either Leblanc or Rumble is to... Uh, send Tom Kench into bottom. Uh, it makes it a little bit worse, but Tom Kench ult is basically a TP into mid lane, and they can definitely defend Nasher like that too. But this is definitely a good window of opportunity for Immortals when they have TP advantage. Uh, the Nash situation from before was was super important, but of course what TSM is doing here is just uh, not acceptable. They are going for, for Soaz, and uh, this leaves uh, Immortal with an opportunity to do Nash, and everyone's out of position. Tardok's out of position. Rumble's out of position, Senna has TP, but it doesn't matter. Tom Kench ult at bottom, so they can't reach in time. Bjergsen is looking to WR, but with the Banshee build, he doesn't do that much damage. There's a lot of Mercury's, a lot of MR as well. It's not that great. So a couple of people die here for Immortals, but Nashra still has the same amount of value, because as we mentioned before, you know, ideally here, Soaz lives and uh, uh, one more guy lives, because you want the guy who is uh, the split pusher, the one, and also one person in the four to also have it. So Bjergsen goes in here, but uh, good Elise repel here onto the target, uh, it, it's juicy. So two deaths for Arnash, so as uses TP, they're very happy because this gives so much breathing room for Immortals. When you have Nash, it gives you the opportunity to group, and the more you force TSM to group, the better. But TSM still, they can look for those flanks, they can look for uh, the situation where Leeson is hiding in fog, Rumble can be hiding in fog, and then it would be a lot better. Instead, they are sitting most of the time in mid lane and sitting ducks, and they are, uh, you know, uh, not doing a, a good job of just staring at the enemy. So here, if we evaluate the game, you know, Immortal's composition is in full fruition. They have uh, Nashor. It is uh, becoming trickier and trickier. The, the main point here is Senna is very, very strong. So in mid lane, she can also poke away with rapid fire cannon if he has the guts to walk up more. I think Kobe could have walked up more uh, if he trusts his Tom Kench to to um, to eat him when he's in danger because it's difficult for Immortals to commit all the way and there's also QSS on uh, on Tom Kench. So I think Kobe could have definitely walked up more and autoed uh, the enemy more because unlike uh, TSM, Immortals don't have healing. So I think I think Kobe could have done more with his rapid fire and uh, in terms of how much he walks up. Dardok is uh, still uh, showing constantly on mid lane. Broken Blade constantly showing on mid lane, just eating, eating harassment. Bjergsen being on the solo mission to finding flanks. Imagine Broken Blade sits here, 
uh, Lee Sin is together with Leblanc constantly and threatening uh, a flank. That's just the best way to play it. And then when Immortals are forced to poke from such a position, let's say they're poking in mid lane from such a position, dodging that becomes so easy because TSM will have so much space to work with, right? Right now, Immortals can be so central in the lane just because TSM are constantly showing us four. So it's so easy. They're just sitting ducks here. No pressure at all from Lee Sin, no pressure at all from Rumble. Just very poor understanding of... Uh, of uh, uh, how they uh, ha have to pilot their champion in order to be impactful in this fight or uh, this game for that matter okay so this rumble ult was was quite okay here uh, as you can see senna's strength is is quite juicy because the, the healing is uh, is so significant he's healing uh, 200 the cooldown is quite long but if he gets to basic attack ward or so forth then it's also quite juicy uh, this fight, let's take a look at it. I can't uh, recall what happens in this one. I just have to remember. Oh, yeah. Smithy gets popped. So this was very nice. Bjergsen finding flanks. Bjergsen, honestly, uh, having good mindset in this game in terms of how uh, they should fight. I think Dardok needed to follow the mindset. Bjergsen uh, uh, needed to share some of that wealth. But now, after the Banshees buy a purchase that's good for team fighting, weaker for split. Now Bjergsen is going to reach Void Staff, and this is where uh, TSM will definitely be in a super, super hard winning position. This is good. They got two uh, Cloud Drakes, pretty juicy for, for Leblanc. Her cooldown decreases. Tom Kench also doesn't buy that much CDR in his build, especially going Redemption. Here, it's a bit too greedy. This is too greedy because, once again, we are in the same position. You are knocking on the enemy's front door against a full poke composition. The full poke composition, of course, has the choice of should we fight, should we force, and you can't accomplish anything because the same rules apply. You need to find flanks in order to force. And here, TSM were just a bit too greedy and they lost a good listen on this day and Immortal have. They have a very, very big tempo swing here. As you can see, they're walking down mid lane and... Uh, if I remember correctly, they will get uh, the, the inhibited turret. Maybe I remember wrong. Seems like I remember wrong. Later they get the inhibited turret. Okay. So, just to highlight again, a Immortal in the mid lane. Uh, here, TSM in the mid lane. Just overextend Immortals poking, poking, poking. And uh, TSM have no pressure here. Okay. 35-30, yes. Uh, this is where uh, Leblanc uh, will begin to uh, win split with the Void against uh, Aatrox. Uh, he will build a big wave on bottom. Uh, Rumble should look to go into top side. Well, uh, split pushing top for Leblanc is also fine because she wins against Zoe as well. So uh, either way, it's it's cool. Aatrox doesn't get hard stomped in uh, the 1v1 because Leblanc is running TP and doesn't have Ignite. So as... Um, doesn't have uh, what's it called uh, there is no heal healing reduction so it's not completely one-sided but tsm have tools they have the tamkin shoulder level 11 they have rumble tp they have senna tp there are ways for them to break through meaning they can send multiple numbers into bottom sides they can uh, find ways to outnumber on the map they need to use these cooldowns to force fights where they outnumber that is the main idea, because if they keep grouping four on mid and they are constantly showing, uh, this is the dream position for Mortal's composition. They are the poke composition. I'm uh, sounding like a one-string banjo at this point, where I'm just repeating the same point over and over. It's all about uh, just uh, finding space behind the enemy. Uh, next thing. 38. Thirty-eight. Is this the moment I'm looking for? Here, Dardok still showing on mid wave. You know what is Dardok doing this entire game? Honestly, uh, here is the flank from Soaz. It's quite a good one. Rumble ult is uh, not in uh, the direction. Here, uh, this is just uh, desperation. Honestly trying to force with a composition that doesn't have an easy way of engaging 
you need to uh, contest space behind the enemy. Leblanc had TP during this entire duration, and I think the way TSM forces Nasher was 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 quite desperate. Because another strength of poor compositions is that uh, they can easily, easily uh, deal uh, with uh, Nashors, of course. If you're standing here and you get poked by a Zoe and Ezreal, you're not going to have a good time. And TSM don't have the strongest Nasher team. So I felt like this was just plain frustration with the direction the game has been heading in. There was no reason to look to force this. Look how cold Immortals are in their decision making. Ezreal is still pushing mid. They have full vision of the Nashor. Immortals are just sticking around because they have information on everybody. They have information on everybody. Their back is completely protected with vision. They have full vision. They know that no one's going to be flanked, even though they don't know where Bjergsen is. Maybe they saw his TP or something. Sometimes there are. Uh, you can see it on the map, right? But Immortals is so completely safe here, and they have uh, the information on the Baron HP. They are fully safe behind themselves because they have full vision on this side. This is uh, a very, very poor attempt from TSM because as they TP it into here, Immortals had full access to this Baron. Full access. They had Amazon Prime, they had Twitch Prime, they had uh, anything. So this was quite close. Broken Blade landing quite a good ultimate, but it's just not good enough. Uh, if it was placed slightly better, it could have been a game winner for sure. But now with the HP that TSM have lost here in this position, it uh, it becomes quite uh, quite tricky. Immortals look for the recall. TSM match, and this is the big window of opportunity. Big window of opportunity. Let me just check my notes. Forty one forty five. Well, I've been talking for 40 minutes already and I tried to, to, to highlight points that uh, made this shorter. This Rumble Ult was, was very good. Broken Blade came out of Fog of War. Bjergsen also came from the flank. But as you can see, the Dardox still struggling to do anything in these fights. Uh, Kobe hitting. Smithy dropping low. The ult of Kobe uh, whiffing. Bjergsen with a good flash. But not good enough. He gets popped. Oof. Uh, I, I thought Bjergsen here had, had R. But he doesn't have R. If he has R here, then it's a, it's a GG. Trying to remember the time where uh, Bjergsen finally goes into bottom side. Like after Void, he should be just camping on bot, pressuring uh, that inhibitor. Uh, here, uh, again, uh, this is so, so desperate. Especially because Dardok is constantly showing the blue trinkets are flying from Immortals and... Uh, Immortals is a poke composition, and Immortals are once again sitting, I mean, TSM are once again sitting like ducks here. It's uh, a very, very poor. This Rumble ult was not good enough, and uh, Kobe needs to uh, up his uh, healing per minute numbers. Here, Immortals uh, force TSM away completely, which is fantastic. There are some fruits to be eaten, Dardok eats away, and uh, there is a sleep. Myofros is looking to block. But the mortals have uh, a very good position. I didn't understand X Smithy's uh, little uh, stopwatch here, but um, okay. X Smithy walks away. TSM uh, staying very healthy because of how busted Senna is. So Senna is super OP. But here, uh, Ezreal's move is just next level. Uh, once again, like like the previous situation where uh, Ezreal was taking the mid tower, here he's taking the ocean 
uh, the air dragon and uh, honestly the air dragon is so powerful for immortals because the more mobile they are the harder it is for uh, tsm to find opportunities and also uh, they have champions that can really really use uh, the active cool reduction on ezreal's ult is super op because uh, it stacks super well with q uh, zoe with her r it's such a low cooldown uh, you can constantly use uh, the air drake uh, move speed uh, aatrox as well synergizes super well with it so this 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 soul is is immensely powerful and dsm are still you know just putting the same idea over and over while clearly it doesn't work and now we continue the nash is not going down fast enough leblanc is not good in good is, leblanc is not good at killing nash neither is a, a rumble of course and this fight uh, ends in a, uh, in a in a cocktail way smith is coming in the healing of kobe is still fantastic and the mortals uh, walk away 48 we have a very good move from uh, from tsm uh, finally uh, you know still same issue uh, it's unbelievable how many times i repeated that are constantly showing He's just sharing XP. Because honestly, if we ask the question, what did Dardoch do this game, uh, past the early game? He did nothing. And uh, I understand the jungle is in a weak position, but that doesn't uh, allow you to literally pass 15 minutes to do nothing, because that's what Dardoch has been doing. Um, Bjergsen now finally uh, just goes into bottom side and uses the fact that he has TP. This is a fantastic move. This is something that could have been happening the entire game. Uh, so as uh, doesn't have TP here, uh, TSM is still in a winning position here. They are definitely in a winning position. Immortals uh, will have to look to start Nasher to force Leblanc to move, because uh, here Immortals should just start Nash right here. They should just start Nash, force TSM to face check. Uh, Leblanc goes all the way. She pushes. Uh, immortals are trying to look to force on uh, TSM. Uh, TSM had a ward right here, so they are still uh, they are still in a position good enough to to spot the Nash. So as long as Immortals is not starting Nash, or TSM have no reason to walk up. They just want to back up as much as possible and hide and hide. Just defend your turret, because here Bjergsen is doing the right thing, creating pressure, and then Immortals will be the ones that are forced to start Nash. And then when Immortals are the ones starting Nash, it is difficult for them too. The Nash damage is okay at this point, they're not going to take a lot of damage, Ezreal is quite strong, but all of a sudden the Rumble ult becomes so much deadlier. The Rumble ult becomes so much deadlier, the turning potential of Immortals is not that high, Zoe can maybe poke, maybe find something, but you have Zoe, you have Tom Kench to eat. So this was still a winning position for TSM, but TSM get caught in mid while they have baron vision they can use the redemption for baron vision they can use blue trinket for baron vision they have two wards around nash they would spot everything so this is a massive mistake from tsm because bjergsen could have just taken the bottom inhib so as no tp this was the right move to go for and uh, from a winning position it turned into into losing so bjergsen threatens end to make sure that uh, uh, immortals doesn't go for nash uh, Bjergsen has been very wise this game, honestly, in terms of how he positioned for the fights, in terms of finding flanks. Because even though we can easily walk away from this thinking, yeah, uh, they should have split pushed, TSM, uh, the approach Bjergsen had in team fights was still uh, very crisp and good. With Nasher, you can see the speed is not uh, the fastest in the world. Bjergsen is still on bottom side, threatening end. He's looking to get another tower. Uh, and the Immortals are doing Nash with three man. So this is. A very dangerous game that they are playing. Now, after the bottom inhib is over, we can evaluate the position, right? Bottom inhib is down and uh, there are no TPs. It's very important for TSM to activate topside as well. And this is what they are missing uh, for the rest of the game. They are never activating topside and Bjergsen keeps trying to go bottom, but uh, Immortals are just matching. The reason you want to activate topside is because you want to be as far away from the enemies when they are trying to pressure the Leblanc. Basically, 
If the enemy is rotating into bottom to deal with LB, you want to be in top side pressuring. When you pressure top side and the enemy is making a rotation into here and you control this space that I'm uh, filling now, meaning the, the top side quadrant, the red side jungle of, of the red side team, then you can begin to pressure Nash. But the issue that we will see now when this bottom inhib is down is that TSM are constantly repeating the same input. They find success in the bottom inhib play. Uh, Bjergsen keeps going bottom, looking to threaten end, which is fine. But Immortals are still hovering around mid lane and TSM struggle to find any pressure here. If you want to go for a move like this, you need to find ways to, uh, to pressure here, right? And then maybe you can threaten TPs. You can threaten TPs, right? You can threaten uh, Tamkench ult from here into here, right? Tamkench ult would have such a range right now. You can also look to TP with Rumble. There is many ways to make Leblanc's pressure in bottom so much deadlier. But instead, TSM, once again, showing four man on mid lane. And this is constantly the issue. Four man on mid lane, top wave will be completely ignored. Top lane will be completely ignored. We can fast forward. Here they are starting Nash. So it is showing. But once again, there is very little threat here. Bjergsen can TP. Zoe position, they don't know. Poking is still gonna happen. And they have easy access. Imagine this wave was here and four men of TSM were pressuring here. Right? Then all of a sudden they can take this space. It is just easier to defend bottom through mid. But imagine if the enemy had to defend bottom all the way from top. That is a way longer distance, right? Than just this. Even though this play isn't the worst in the world, you can find a position where you outnumber. You can continue here. You can go for it. This is not the end of days. I think uh, hitting this is not the biggest problem. You know, forcing the Nash here is not the biggest problem. I still think the better play, though, would be to... 4-man top, 4 zero, one. Instead, TSM cancel the Nash. Cancel culture, alive and well. They should keep hitting it. Because this, this is their opportunity to create a 4v5 situation. Leblanc TPs. Leblanc can one-shot right now with these items. And they can look to win the game here with the TP. But still, ideally, you push this 4-0-1. Now TP of Aatrox is coming up, but I think LeBlanc, I can safely say that uh, with Deathcap now, uh, she, he's going to win. It's just, uh, he needs to just commit, and uh, the lack of Grievous Wound is still uh, a problem. That's why Banshee is worse for the split, where you want to finish Morello. Uh, I know LS, is, LS Morello memes are coming, but this is a case where Morello is, is good because you need Grievous Wounds. That's the only case where Morello is good, where Grievous Wound is good. Broken Blade, Dardog is still showing, everyone is walking up here, blah blah blah, raya, raya, raya. Bjergsen is basing, and uh, TSM are now continuing with the same input. So now, there is an issue, because the composition becomes better uh, when, the, the composition for Immortals becomes better when Elder Drake spawns. Because 4-1 means that you can constantly play on an objective and the bottom inhib is spawning and uh, TSM got very little power out of this. So now in order to fight, there's still the same rules apply. You need to find a flank with Senna, Lee Sin, uh, not flank with Senna, you need to find a flank with uh, Leblanc and Lee Sin, and uh, Rumble ult and Senna ult and uh, just commit, right? Still the same. Bjergsen is fine, no problem, poke is happening. This is also a very key moment because Bjergsen does a very good move here, chunking Zoe to fuck. There's the kick, Dardo gets out, he gets eaten, uh, this uh, Brom is very tanky, Broken Blade tries to get out with the W, the move speed is on, the healing is happening, as you can see, uh, Immortal. Immortals are losing a lot of HP and so is TSM, but these trades are favoring, uh, of course, uh, 
TSM because they can heal with Senna. Senna healing down is so high. There is a poke on Soaz, and Soaz is out, no more of Marmotius proc. The engage happens, TSM is hot committing, but Dardok is uh, no kick, so he's not committing. Now they're pushing with his bottom wave, but this is not the right move. They are looking to force Immortals to, to back off, but this is uh, just beneficial for them. I think this was prime time to pressure the Elder Dragon. They chunked a lot of people, Elder Dragon falls fast, they should have started hitting it and uh, force a situation where the enemy is low HP. Another very similar situation happens here. They started, but now, as you can see, Immortals is back and they're full HP and it's just way too late. The push they did on bottom, it was just uh, completely unnecessary, right? They managed to find some big chunks and then Senna healed them up. It was a good situation, right? Next time, next thing we see here, uh, we're going to see Bjergsen chunk Eka to, to space. Which is also uh, pretty good. Uh, so as uh, commits, uh, the rumble ult uh, is not the greatest. Immortals are backing up, but then uh, look at Bjergsen's move here. Aika is out of the fight. Allow Bjergsen to do this one more time, and your elder is for free. All of a sudden, now when when Leblanc has death cap, uh, more avenues to how you can play the game opens up. Bjergsen did a massive move here. Why are we not pressuring Nasha? I don't care if Rumble is low HP, you can heal him up. Uh, Senna has enough mana to, 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 to heal you up here. So there is no reason to back up after you delete Aika from the map here. The, I, I don't see the reasoning behind why TSM are basing and recalling here. So now... Now it will become if i evaluate the position now in this position i think immortals is favored because now it will be very difficult for tsm to create pressure on side uh, immortals if they group five on mid they're going to be able to get the prio and it's just because tsm is behind on tempo they will not be able to find flanks so tsm is uh, reliant on flanks they're reliant on split push when Immortals has higher tempo, they can just take the mid prior, walk into uh, the Elder, and uh, it will turn into a 50-50. Even though, uh, you know, still, I believe uh, the best call is to send Bjergsen into, uh, into top and look to pressure and then put a timer on Immortals, I still think this is the best move, you know, for, for, for TSM. Just go top create uh, a timer forcing immortals to force and then that's the best case scenario for your fight we continue immortals is definitely favored though because they had better tempo they are seeing bjergsen on the map uh, tsm are trying to find access through bottom onto the elder but immortals can easily just run it down mid here and take the inhib because tsm cannot start elder and Immortals are they taking the correct call because TSM is not showing. So Immortals' macro decision is just full soas. They are uh, playing very smart. Very, very smart. Full soas. This Bjergsen should have died. Uh, instead, Aika almost dies. Uh, Immortals, as you can see, their composition is uh, so strong. If you are straight up 5v5 and the enemy has no flanks, they have full vision. I think even Immortals could have potentially ended here if it wasn't for Aika's misstep. But that's okay. Bjergsen uh, TP's in, which is one big tool gone. Very important. 58-20 is uh, the next moment. Aika is dead, so this will be difficult to end. 58-20. Not sure what I wanted with this. I wrote this point down. Let's just check the rest of the game. Michael almost got sniped in half. The rest of the game. Oh, I think 58-20. Uh, my evaluation was here that... Uh, if uh, Immortals just uh, go 5-man mid, that they can end the game here. 
with uh, Elder and Nash. Like right now with this wave, super creep, they can just they can end here. That was my point. They can just end. I'll walk it down mid here, and uh, you can look to end. They chose to play it safe. Okay. For a 55 minute game, you know, I respect playing safe, no problem. But I think here they can they can run it down. Run it down, make sure you're safe on your sides. Ward up and uh, uh, all will be good. Here they spot Leblanc's position, they can definitely walk up. All they gets chunked. Okay. They play it safe. It's alright. Okay. They get the triple inhib. And then they go for Immortal, I mean, for Elder and another Baron, and uh, then uh, now they go for the clean end. So it's not the biggest point. Okay. So as TP. Alright. So this was uh, wonderful. This was wonderful uh, from Immortals. They uh, showed discipline in terms of how they're supposed to play their comp. Uh, even though I think their comp is weaker in terms of early game and the options that they have, they stuck to playing 1-4 and took a lot of great macro decisions. In terms of draft, Rumble has no place here. Rumble's very strong, but this was not a Rumble composition. It just hurt uh, LeBlanc, right? So this is uh, the draft point, right? These four picks belong together, but Rumble had no purpose here. Immortals have a weaker draft on paper, but one for a clear plan, everything uh, fits here. Aatrox is the one, and then the, the four is very strong as well, as we saw. All right? And in order to break this, we need to find flanks. Lee Sin was constantly showing. Very, very big problem. Very big problem. Dardoch gets a F- minus for uh, his contribution to this game past 15 minutes. Bjergsen, I think he was very intelligent in his approach, in, the, in his approach to find flanks, but I think his cooperation with Dardoch needs to just get better. If they came together from those flanks and they coordinated together with Rumble Ult and Senna Ult, they could have definitely won this game with the lead that they had. If Leblanc goes for Banshee, she's itemizing for team fights, and that's completely fine. Uh, later on, they could have used their global power a lot more. Not identifying strengths, uh, this is something that we can, uh, a kind of the summary of the game, right? Not using Tamkinsh ult, not using TP enough, uh, not using flanks enough, right? So as 200 IQ was a big problem, gave them Nash, gave them uh, the Dragon Soul, uh, was fantastic. Tamkinsh ult TPs we addressed, itemization we also addressed. Desperation Nashers. So TSM looked very confused in this game and they started Nasher when they really shouldn't. They went for it and it just, you know, starting Nash against the pole composition is just a, a very, very basic rule that you need to follow. So I hope everyone learned something from this game in order how, in order to how you, like basically how you break this composition and why I laughed at this composition in the first place. TSM have all the ability in the world to snowball from the early game and then to create. Uh, Dardoch played the early game well, but then afterwards he was not a player. He was not a player. And that's uh, a fact. And the Immortals took the very safe approach and they just punished a lot of the mistakes that TSM was doing. To give, you know, TSM some breathing room and not to flame them too hard, uh, not a lot of people play compositions like this. So Immortals definitely caught them with the pants down. And um, TSM didn't know how to use Tamkin Schultz, didn't know how to split, didn't know how to flank. And it uh, bit them in the ass. That was one hour. Uh, I think if I reviewed the full game, it would have been longer. If you guys think I missed something, uh, please let me know. If you have any feedback, please let me know. Uh, thank you so much for watching. Uh, this was uh, a lot of fun. So I'll catch you guys on the next review. Uh, uh, write comments below if there's some specific games that you want to uh, watch or see. I think the, the one that I will do next is uh, EG versus Dignitas. If you watch this game and this review till the end, then uh, God bless your soul. Bless your face. If you sneeze during this video, bless you as well. And bless your dog. I'll catch you guys uh, in the next one. Uh, peace.